painting and travel tour of the old Preskill Isle Lighthouse on the shore of Michigan's Lake Huron. Sarah climbs the tower and visits the keeper's house. Roger uses acrylics to paint a bird's eye view of the 30-foot tower. Lighthouses vary in height and design, yet all contain rich history and a common purpose. Looking east across Lake Huron towards Ontario, Canada, I'm imagining what it might have been like navigating in the dark on this vast lake, trying to determine where the shoreline was in the years before these marvelous nighttime luminaries existed. The hardworking families that maintain these lights must be credited with saving countless lives. We are lucky so many lighthouses have been preserved, restored, and are open to the public. And this is the subject of Roger's next painting, the old Preskill Lighthouse. I'm using a 16 by 20 inch masonite board today, and it's primed in gesso, and I put a tone of uh, blue on here, a combination of some cerulean blue, some white, and a little bit of purple. On my palette today, I have a rainbow of colors, including titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, alizarin crimson. I have a violet. I have some earth colors here, including burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre, burnt umber, and I have two greens. I have a sap green and a chromium oxide green. Since these are acrylics and they do dry very fast, if I want to leave the uh, painting for a while, I've just created a little box here. This is a piece of plexiglass, a little piece of wood on the side, and uh, I can spray my acrylic paints with a little bit of a water from this mister. Then I just place this little box over that. It just keeps these paints wet for quite a bit longer. There's a lot of different variations of this, but covering the paints like this can keep it a bit more manageable for quite some time. I'd like to start with my darks with ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a touch of green, and just put some of these darks in first. And I've already drawn the image here on the board. Saves me a little bit of time. And now I'm just going to cut around the building here. This is the keeper's house. And often I tone my board with a burnt sienna, but in this case I just used a, a blue because a lot of this is in shadow, like the uh, blue of the house, and of course the blue sky and blue water. Right out here we have a nice flower bed. This is purple. That's why I put this purple out here. But it's very dark. So I'm mixing it with some of this green here. This was a lovely area of the country to be in. And also there were so many lighthouses in Michigan, well over a hundred of them. So there's lots of subject matter up there for those of you who like lighthouses. Well, it's really a matter of choice now. What I, what I pick up next, I could do the do the uh, side of the buildings, or I could do the grass or the sky. Really, really doesn't matter that much. The main thing is I need to get the, the board covered with something. So I think maybe I'll just start with a grass here. It's quite a brilliant, brilliant green. And as I scumble this on, a lot of this blue color will sort of show through. It doesn't show through a lot, but it does influence the look of the painting. Okay, right in here we have some more grass. We've got a lot of trees and shrubbery here too, but I'm going to fill this in with grass to begin with, and then I can put the darker foliage over that. And I'm not wasting any time in just getting this covered. I don't want to 
uh, play around with it too much. I just want to get my brush strokes a bit rough, you know, just sort of uh, loose here. And that will uh, express some of the grass, grassy look. Okay, so we'll continue to cover this board. And we've got the lighthouse here. I guess I'll go for that next. So some cerulean blue and white and maybe a touch of purple. Oh, it's almost the color of the background, so I need to get that darker or the background lighter. And I think this background is going to be lighter, so let me put this on here first. I'm just bringing this right down in there, and uh, this part of the lighthouse over here is going to be much lighter, but I won't worry about that yet. These lighter portions of the painting will most likely be added quite a bit later. Now here's where that blue undertone really helps because I can touch this in here and I don't really have to cover everything. Since these colors are so similar, I can just uh, sort of tap these in here and if that blue shows through, that's just fine. Just spray my board there some. I'll just get this a little bit damp. That way I'll put this on as a very thin wash and let that blue show through. This is pretty much the same color and the same value, but what I'm doing here is I'm getting a little bit of texture on this wall. Before, when I toned the board, I did a pretty flat tone of that area. Now we'll just get a little bit of texture on there. Not very much, it's very subtle. We'll jump up to the sky now, and that sky needs to be much lighter. I'm going to going to take my box here and my razor blade, remove some of this paint from my palette so I have a clean space. And I'll start with the sky, cerulean blue and white. Maybe a touch of yellow ochre in here just to give it a little bit of warmth. I know that will make it slightly green, hopefully not too much. I think I'll spray my board here just gives it a little bit of lubrication so that flows over the, the upboard. Now I may find out this is not the right background color. That's another reason I don't want to spend a lot of time on any one area. I just want to get this covered and after I get it all covered then I can better determine if these values and colors are the right ones that I want on the painting. Now I do want the brightest part of my painting to be right here on this lighthouse. And we'll put that on in just a, a moment or two. I'm going to make this slightly darker up here towards the uh, zenith. We have some cumulus clouds up here. They're uh, not very visible, but a little bit. That'll add some interest to the painting. Well, the brightest part of this painting, like I said, is right here on the side of the lighthouse. So I'm taking some white touch of yellow ochre because it's being lit by the sun, so it's warm. And I'll put that white right in there. And this will really tell me whether I have the values and the colors where I want them to be. Sort of sets up the whole scenario of this painting. And we have one more dark area to the painting, and that's right at the uh, lantern room. So with ultramarine blue, burnt umber, that just makes a nice dark value there. Not quite black, but nice and dark. We'll put the uh, base of the lantern room here. And right up here, that's inside the lantern room, that's kind of looking up into the lantern room. Well, being that this is acrylics, this dries very fast. And in just a, a matter of a minute here, this is drying up because that was put on quite thin. Now down here, we have a lot of grass and there's gonna be some reflected light from that grass onto this building. So I'll take some green, mix it with some cerulean blue, and 
and I'll mix some of that green color into the bottom of this lighthouse. I'll spray this so that flows together much easier. Now I'm almost using these paints as if they were watercolors. I'm just using these very thin. Another thing this green will do down here is give the painting some harmony and tie the tie things together, tie the grass to the building and so on. I don't want any one part of the painting looks like it were uh, just so far separated from the rest of the subjects in the painting. And we'll move over to this side. There's a lot of nice branches and foliage up here. I want to vary my colors somewhat. So we'll just dip into a variety of colors here to get some of these leaves. It's a pretty big flat area here that doesn't have much interest at all. So I'm going to take these leaves and bring them down a bit more just to break up this large area. I'm putting in the leaves first and later I'll put in some of the uh, branches. I kind of prefer to do it that way rather than putting in the branches first and then putting in the leaves. Now I still want this to maintain a loose feel, at least on parts of this painting. Other parts of the painting are going to be quite, quite tight, especially when we get up into this area of the lantern room. But in here, I want to keep this fairly loose. I keep spraying my, my board. Just lets this paint flow on so easily. I'll wash this brush and then make some of the grass even lighter. So we'll take the cadmium yellow, chromium oxide green. Now, what I'm trying to do here is just give this a loose touch because I don't want to lose this background color. It's, it's dry uh, because I want some of this background color, this dark green, to show through. I just don't want to paint it with one big solid color again. A fan brush would be a good choice for this, but pretty much any, any brush will do. I'm just really roughing this brush up. I'm pretty, I'm pretty hard on brushes, but that's what they're for. And when they get worn out, just either save them for something like grass or just toss them away. Don't use a, a, a brush that's been well worn uh, for areas of detail. It just won't, won't work, won't be helpful at all. And over here to the right, we have a, a front porch and a walkway, and that's quite light. So I'll just put a hint of that in. Doesn't show up very much. It's kind of hidden by most of these trees. We're standing inside the Keeper's House in Presque Isle, Michigan. This is a wonderful looking lighthouse. We've seen several on the way up. We've been traveling along the coast of Lake Huron and we always stop at the lighthouses. And I particularly found this one very charming. This is Sally, she's on staff today. Tell me about this lighthouse. Oh, this is an amazing lighthouse. Uh, it was built in 1840. It's a short lighthouse, 30 feet tall. And the main reason it's always put up is because um, we have a harbor here and the ships would come in here to get off the rough waters. But in 1870, the shipping industry had increased so much that they had to build a taller lighthouse. So the new Presque Isle Light is one mile up the road. It's 113 feet tall compared to only 30 feet on this one. Now this 30-foot lighthouse has one of the most attractive staircases I've seen. It's granite? Yes, it is. Uh, Hand-carved stone. Here are these interesting granite steps she was talking about. You can see they're kind of a pie shape. I wonder where those uh, craftsmen came from. That doesn't sound like an easy no. trade to have learned. I mean, you wonder how they can even do that sort of thing it, way back in 1840. <laughs> hand hewn. Right. Now this building is very attractive. What state was it in and has it been uh, updated? Oh yes. Um, this lighthouse only be in service 30 years, but in 1870, when the new one was ready, then the lighthouse keeper that was here, he went on up to, to the new light to, to be the first lighthouse keeper at the new light. So this building was closed. Congress let it sit vacant for many, many years. And then finally in 1932, they put an open sale market on it to the public. And a family from Lansing, Michigan bought it. 
I'm so glad they did because it's just um, got a very nice feeling. Yeah, it's a very comfortable home. We'll take a look upstairs. I think this is another sleeping quarters. Another cozy sleeping area and also a little workspace for a pedal operated sewing machine. I suppose when you're a keeper's wife, you have to come up with just about everything from creative ways to use whatever food is in season to making your own clothes and using scraps for quilts. Very easy to want to stay right here and live here. Mm -hmm. And of course, summer is so beautiful right now. You have a little garden out front. Uh, you've got some bells, I've noticed. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the bells, the big bell out, out by the lighthouse came from the old city hall in Lansing. Okay, we're going to hear this wonderful bell and the aftertone. some huge doors and other large beams. Where did all that wood come from? Well, we have a, a loft that's here now. And when the house was restored in the 1930s, they used old barn wood from this area, which worked out wonderful. And then we have also five doors in the house that are made from a ship. So it's a ship called the Fame that sank off our point in 1888. And when the Stebbins family was working on the house in the 1930s, that wood finally started floating up on the shore. And they salvaged what they could of that wood and ended up building five doors for the house in here. And they're gorgeous doors. Huh. Here's a charming old bed from the past. Top hat, dresser. I love these beams, all hand hewn and recycled. And this is one of those fabulous doors they made from the ship that sank, the fame. Now I have a question, are there any legends about the lighthouse? Yes, oh yes. <laughs> a very well known legend is our lighthouse light comes on, but there's no power in the lighthouse. And uh, they said, Lorraine, there's no way light can come on out there. What do you think's going on? She says, well, you know what? Has to be my husband, George. He's come back to tell me he's still watching over me. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? I've seen it. About four years ago, I saw it. About, oh, 10, 10, 30 at night, just after it got dark, and the light came on, and I was so surprised I couldn't <laughs> believe my own eyes. But there were other people there. Well, that's a great story. Further back, we have the water. We haven't addressed that yet. So I'm taking my cerulean blue one more time, a touch of ultramarine blue. I'm just putting that on there to see if I'm getting the right value. Now I'll take my ruler here and horizon line is just about here. Now this hard line down here is really bothersome, so I'm going to adjust that right now. It was drawn in that way, just it was a practical way to draw it in, but there's weeds and some bushes, a few, a few different things growing up here. So with some of the dark color, because this is in shadow, we'll just break up that hard line. I want to keep the, the painting fairly accurate, but, but there's nothing saying that I can't improve on my photograph if I think I can. But yeah, that really gets rid of that hard line across there. That makes a big difference. Right down in here, I want this slightly darker. This seems a little too light. It's just bringing a little too much attention down here. I'll just put in some darker areas with some titanium white, cadmium yellow. I'll spray the board, give me that soft look. A few patches of really bright sunlit grass. Just using the edge of my brush to do this. What I'm trying to do is just give some variation to all that's going on here. All right, now I'm going to work on some of the detail. If I were using oils, this would be a whole different ball game because I could blend these colors so easily, but with acrylics, you can't blend them very easily. The saving grace to all that is this sprayer that, you know, if I spray this, 
it can just make the wet paint flow into the dry paint and, and really make it look like it's being blended. So I'm just going to continue with this lighthouse here and make some variations in the uh, colors and values and then I need to give it some texture. Now this lighthouse is in very nice shape but there are some areas of the lighthouse where you can see where some of the paint is chipped away. I'll just try and put in some of that look. Now I don't want to pretend like I'm going to paint in every brick here because I'm not. I just want to give this a suggestion of that. A few areas here I might just tap in a few little patches that might suggest a brick or two. Well I'm going to spray my palette one more time and scrape some of this paint off. Get a fresh start here on my palette. And I'll take a small brush and with some dark color, ultramarine blue and brown, I'm going to put in some of these details right up here at the lantern room. Paint is thin enough where it's going to flow off easily. Just bring these lines down. Oh, and you know what? I should put in the light first before I put those lines over there. And these lights generally look sort of a greenish color glass just sort of reflects that way or something that always makes them look a bit green. All right now I'll continue with these lines down here. Just using my thumb and forefinger to run down the edge of this board and I have my my brush right on the end of the ruler. Gives me a nice straight line. And these go all the way around, so some of them will appear a little bit smaller. These are just little accents that will give the painting a finished look. Next we have the railing that goes along here. Now I can't see the railing very well because it's a black railing on a uh, black part of the lighthouse there, so I am going to mix up a lighter gray so I can see the rest of the railing here. And next I'll put the lightning rod at the top here. That lightning rod is so small, I, instead of using a brush, I could use a pencil and put a line in there, but it's a small brush, so I think I'm just going to use the, uh, the paintbrush to put in that line. Now on that glass, I'm going to uh, add some light on a few of these panels here, otherwise it'll look like there's no glass at all inside there, so I'm just changing the uh, color somewhat on a few of these panes right here. I've done lots and lots of lighthouse paintings and I'll show you a few of those now. These were all done on 16 by 20 inch masonite boards. I like the masonite boards because of their smooth surface and they take up very little storage space. It's been a favorite subject of mine for a long time. I can make good straight horizontal lines same way I did the uh, vertical lines with this brush. Just using my finger down there, running it along the edge of my board. And I'll continue to use my straight edge and strike these lines down here, the roof of the house, different pitches of the roof. The trick is to have enough paint on the brush and load it up enough where the paint will flow off the edge of the brush. And now I'll put these shingles on. I think I'll just freehand those just to give them a little bit of an irregular look. I don't want a perfectly straight line across there. Just kind of wiggling my brush to give it that a little bit of a texture. See, I didn't have to load my brush up again. I just had enough paint on that brush to go all the way down and do that. And a few more right down here, and that should finish the shingles on the roof. And there is a bit of sunlight hitting right here, so I'm going to make this a bit of an accent with some hard light. Well, with my purple, I want to uh, spruce up these plants right here in the foreground. And the reason I started with this darker color is so I could put a lighter color over it 
and uh, make some accents in here. So just sort of scumbling on a lighter purple. Now I'm going to put in some of these branches. I don't know what kind of tree this is, but it's, boy, these branches are just all over the place. I don't know whether it's an apple tree or what, but these branches just go every which way. This is a real good area to put these branches because uh, this is such a large area with very little going on. A few branches down here will bring some interest to this area of the painting. Now I'll take my spray bottle, I'll spray the side of this house, and I'll put some of the bricks showing here on the side. I don't want very many at all, just a few here and there to indicate that's what they are. So maybe just a few of these are catching a bit of light. So just by putting a few marks on here indicating bricks, it'll give the impression that this is all made out of these bricks. A few more down here. I have to be careful again not to overdo this. Now conversely, I can also add a few dark patches of those bricks. So I'll mix up the uh, ultramarine blue and brown one more time. Use a little more blue than anything in there. And then we'll just add a few of these dark bricks. So then we have a kind of a nice combination of some of these light bricks catching the light and a few of the bricks uh, getting into some shadow areas. And I think to finish this painting, I'm going to add a few indications of some waves out here. I'm just using a bright, put in a few of these Nice little sparkles out here. Well, I think that should finish this painting of the old Preskill Isle Lighthouse. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.